Well, I don't know when I'm going to grow up and not get nervous. If someone can tell me, <laughs> that'd be great. But um, tonight, I want to talk to you about a perfect storm of ideas that's really generating um, an enormous amount of enthusiasm for embracing nature in our cities. Cities around the world are facing unprecedented challenges to maintaining basic livability. For some cities, it's about having clean air, drinkable water. Uh, for others, it's about how we ha have habitable cities in the face of more and more extreme weather events. But for most, if not all cities, that are experiencing exponential population growth. It's about how to keep people healthy and happy, having less stress and anxiety and, and connectedness. And there's a really interesting emerging body of evidence that's showing the enormous potential of urban greening. We call it everyday nature as part of the solution. So I want to talk to you tonight about five compelling ideas for greening our cities and embracing nature in our cities and some pathways we're working on to get there. The first is that nature in cities is good for us. Since the mid-1980s, when Roger Ehrlich first identified that people would recover faster in a hospital room if they had a view of nature, there's a truly remarkable array of benefits that have been unearthed. If your children live in a street with more biodiversity, they'll have more li less likely to have asthma and allergies. If they play in a playground with more biodiversity, they'll have improved cognitive development and lower rates of ADHD. They'll be more likely to live longer and have general health and better health and well-being in a city with more nature. Secondly, everyday nature can help future-proof our cities in the face of climate change. We know that cities are hotter than the country, country areas due to the urban heat island effect, and this is only getting worse. Uh, vegetation can play some really critical roles in helping find solutions to this. So trees can cool a city by up to eight degrees, we think, in Melbourne. Um, they can reduce stormwater runoff in, in peak events. Um, they can reduce the energy use of buildings, and they can even sequester as much carbon in urban forest as a tropical rainforest. The third compelling reason is that cities are hotspots for biodiversity. Our research has shown that there are more than three times the number of threatened species in and around our cities as there are in their rural counterparts. These are just some from around Melbourne. So that cities are really compelling places for doing conservation for its own sake. Fourthly, you've probably all heard of this idea of extinction of experience. People spending less and less time outdoors in more and more depauperate environments. Um, people who know thousands of company logos but only a handful of bird songs. And I think this idea of everyday nature is one of the best opportunities we have to re-enchant people with nature and all of its benefits. The fifth motivation is connecting people with Indigenous culture and history. Indigenous people and knowledge can play a key role in urban greening. What does this mean in practice, though? It means re bringing back species like this that have culturally significant stories. This is a common brown butterfly. It's got an unfortunate name, really common brown, but um, it used to emerge in great numbers at the start of the Wondery, one, one of the seven Wurundjeri seasons. Wouldn't that be great to have that back in Melbourne? This is a program we're working with to uh, work with the traditional owners to help identify totem species for schools where children can learn about re-establishing those species and building habitat for them in their school grounds while learning about the stories and a spiritual connection between your totem, caring for it and it will care for you. I hope I've convinced you that there are some very compelling reasons for uh, engaging with nature in cities, but sadly, the reality is more like this. <laughs> and uh, this is a real billboard on the outskirts of Melbourne over an endangered grassland. So we have to reframe the way we think about nature in the planning process. It's not a problem. It's not a constraint. It's a massive asset that we need to maximise at every step of the planning process. We're working with developers on this uh, idea of a protocol we developed called Biodiversity Sensitive Urban Design that seeks to care for and bring back nature into our cities. We, we encourage careful planning and innovative design and architecture and, and scientifically link those ideas to the persistence of the plants and animals that we want to keep in our suburbs. We need to think about everyday nature where people live, where they play, where they work and where they travel. And there are so many creative ways that we can do this. Here we have a brick that birds are encouraged to nest in on one side, and then people can see them nesting from inside the building. Uh, we uh, are working on other programs like wildlife gardening, for example, where we encourage people to see their backyards as part of the solution to threatened species. 
Uh, and through that, they can strengthen the well-being of their, urban, of, of their communities. This person here says it's better than going to see a psychiatrist. <laughs> um, everyday nature can be everywhere out there. It can be in streetscapes, it can be in green walls, green roofs, roundabouts, pop-up parks, transport routes, uh, even CBD courtyards. These are all places we can re-enchant people with the idea of nature and all of its benefits. Urban form is critical. Urban fringe McMansions, high-rise nightmare, uh, middle ring uh, kind of knockdown rebuilds, these are the way we currently do development and they're not providing that scope for everyday nature. Instead, we need this, biodiverse, sensitive urban design. And it's my belief that this, the future of cities depends on this new conceptualization uh, where nature can thrive and people can enjoy every day the truly remarkable range of benefits that nature can deliver. Thank you.